Customer dropped this boat off, wants some extra storage. I'm gonna put some storage in this rear bench. guys Anthony Jones here with Brigade Boats and in today's video I'm going to show you how to take your John Boats old bench and turn it into functional storage space. Stick around and I'll show you how I do it. I'm also going to be doing a floor system in this boat. Very very stupid simple floor system and I'm going to do a video on that because it's the easiest way you can do a floor system. How I'm going to do it in this boat. This is a little bit more but I'm going to go over it and cover it in this video so thanks for joining me. This is a Topper Tracker 15, and um, he uses this middle seat. So what I've come up with and what I discussed with him was maybe put a, a hatch on this side and another hatch on that side, um, gutting the bench if there's foam in it. I'm assuming that there is, and I'm putting a divider in the middle. So basically creating two compartments with storage access. I'm going to start by pulling the seat and then cutting the top off and seeing what's inside. And then at that point, I'm going to make some decisions of how I want to carry out the process. I got the seat off and now I'm gonna pull some measurements and kind of do some layout and create a game plan of exactly where the hatches are gonna be and how much aluminum I need to remove from this bench. I may just remove the whole top, but I'm yet to uh, decide that. I got some layout done and um, I came in two inches and I just measured off of here. Uh, I think my measurement was like six and 18 and um, whatever my hatch ends up being, I'm gonna, I'm gonna obviously overlap. And so that just is what it is. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run my plywood hatch just flush to the edge and then have a separate piece here and then a middle piece. And then obviously what I do over here, I'll, I'll do it over there on that side. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out and see what's under here. And if it push comes to shove and I gotta cut the whole top off to get foam out, then I will. But for now, I'm gonna play it safe and just cut this small section out and if I'm good to go underneath, then I'm good to go. Using a drill with a hole saw, inch and three eighths, and I'm gonna put it in the corners, do the corners, <clears throat> then I'll come back with a recip saw with a bimetal blade and do my best to cut straight lines. That's normally how I do this, so let's get after it. Oh, and there is fall. That ain't good. Unbelievable. Huh. Okay, so there is foam in there. You can see it. It seems to be spaced off the sides, off the bottom, and off the top because this has some play in it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut this, connect the dots, take that out, see if I could get some of the foam out to at least make my storage on both sides, leave that center section. But if I can't, then I'm going to have to cut the whole top, take all the foam core out, um, and then reattach the middle section back in. Um, be more work, but we're going to see what happens. Okay, based on what I see, I'm going to go ahead and measure the other side out, cut the same hatch, and then I'm gonna connect the dots, pull the middle piece out, pull the whole foam core out, and then I'll see what I'm looking at at that point. And reason being, there's just no way for me to get in here and just take out this small section. It's just gonna be way, way too hard. So I'm just gonna cut the top. And um, this is where I tell you guys, I do not recommend you remove foam guys do it all the time it's there for a reason in case your boat takes on water <clears throat> this is what keeps you afloat but in this case we're adding storage there's foam back in here there's foam in there there's foam in the middle bench 
so that's been covered up with this deck and a lot of times this stuff is waterlogged or dry rotted and already a hazard moving right along got this side matching that side got it cut out now what i'm going to do is connect the dots from here to here here to here cut cut pop the top pull the foam core All right, pop the top on the rear bench. That's your foam rear bench core. Man, this thing is like wedged in there. I'm afraid to, afraid to get bit by black widow. Um, it's probably nothing in there. Bunch of spider webs though. I'm gonna. I think what I'm gonna do is try to cut down the center and then try to flip up and pull it out in two pieces. Some guys just go to town with like sawzalls and just. I'd like to keep it in solid pieces as best way as possible. But I don't know how I'm going to get all the way through in one cut, so I'm going to think on it. Well, that was easy. Cut through. Almost all the way. I had just a little bit. In the bottom corner and in that bottom corner. Anyhow, I think I could break these out and pull them out in two pieces. Man. Come on. Oh, it is wider at the bottom. So it's going to be a little bit tougher to get out than I thought. We're going to get it. Ah! Definitely not uh, practicing OSHA safety standards. Bet you guys are watching this like, look at this idiot. Make it till you make it. Okay, there we go, baby. What they do is there's a, there's a, I'll show it to you in a second. There's a piece of metal that runs in here that they rivet together and the pour foam, when they pour it, it grabs around it and it holds this core in place. This would come right out. I could break these sides, works out good. But on the bottom, that piece of metal is just, the pour foam molded around it. So I'll show it to you in a second. You can see what I mean in here. That piece of, a strip of aluminum, they just rivet it to the sides. You can see more clearly on this side. What happens is they put that in place first then they pour the pour foam and when it goes in you can see it actually overlaps that strip and then hardens and then that's what holds that pour foam core in place which makes it super hard to get it back out so just keep that in mind if you try this at home This is one of the reasons I'm not a huge pour foam guy. As you can see, when they did the pour foam, it filled in this channel. These are obviously here to drain water to the back of the boat. That's full of foam. And then this one was full of foam, but already removed all the foam out of that. So I just want to kind of show you guys that before I gutted that. And then it's funny enough, I found a uh, feeder stick inside of here, I guess, when they were feeding some wires through. So you just never know what you'll find. All cleaned out I am glad that is over that took a few hours guys so now the fun stuff so what I've decided I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a divider right down the middle and then I'm gonna add some angled aluminum to frame over probably I'll go one two three and then put a piece of angled aluminum here and here to hold that plywood off because I want it center and center is obviously where that channel is so you'll see let's get on it all right the aluminum i'm using is one and a half by one and a half inch angled aluminum 1 16th you can get this on tinyboatnation.net and i'm just using one of my old chop saws with a real crappy 40 tooth blade that's what i'm cutting it with Thank you. 
Okay, got those in. And basically what those are, are gonna create ledgers for my wood to sit on. So it'll sit out of this channel to allow water to go under. And then that wood divider will come up and it'll sit flush. I'm gonna do an aluminum piece across the top here that that divider could tie back into. And that's what that's all about. Now time to frame the top up. All right, measured center. And then I made my cut 20 inches. This is gonna go in like so. I'm gonna rivet it in place. Got that in. I'm gonna add another piece of angled aluminum across the bottom actually. And, um, and then what that's gonna do is create this mirrored on the bottom for the plywood to um, go in from the backside and then attach. Before I get ahead of myself, I'm gonna spray some naphtha inside of here and um, wipe everything down. back at it again today inclement weather but we got to get this done so um, I'm gonna go ahead and start by cutting the plywood top this is exterior grade half inch plywood this sheet of plywood was $60 plywood and lumber prices are going through the roof right now so just keep that in mind if you're doing your project okay got all my pieces cut and got everything in the boat test fitted uh, the rains held off long enough for me to do this and uh, looks really nice guys one thing i wanted to point out is that i leave a quarter of an inch reveal anywhere there's a joint for carpet laps um, i'm running on this we're just going to do very budget friendly outdoor carpet from home depot so i went ahead and factored that into my measurements when i cut everything out but that gives you the overall design you're just going to pull lift hatch and that's all there is going to be to it took my dewalt sander and hit all the parts really quickly with 80 grit just kind of knock everything down i'm going to go ahead and take the bondo fiberglass resin and the hardener mix them together and i got some cheap brushes i'm going to apply a good coat on the top and the sides of all of the parts i did a video on fiberglass resin it is a, a full video on how you do this and how it works and how it actually waterproofs um, the wood, I actually submerge it in water and leave it for 24 hours and it just shows you that. So if you're interested in more on that, check the video out and the link up in the top. The parts have been sitting for about three hours. Everything's cured up. Everything is ready to go. And um, as you can see, super, super slick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take um, my sander with some 80 grit and I'm just gonna hit all these real quick, just knock the tops down, knock all the imperfections down and then scuff the surface good to give that carpet glue and carpet something to bite to. So let me do that and then we'll get to wrapping carpet. Got the parts all sanded and cleaned up, time for some carpet. Speaking of which, we are running Nothing special, Home Depot, outdoor carpet. I got a roll of it. It's about 30 bucks worth of carpet to do this in the floor system. And uh, guys, this is a budget project. So we got budget carpet for this project. Indoor outdoor carpet adhesive. This brand in particular is purchased at Lowe's. Uh, I got some spreaders for spreading the glue. Our staples are quarter inch stainless steel so they don't rust out. Staple gun plugs in an air hose and compressor, some pliers to pull the carpet tight around the edges and staple it down. I'm not gonna go into great detail of how I do this step-by-step -step today in this video because I actually have a video on my channel that has over 300,000 plus views and you can check it out here. I'll leave the link in the description. Step-by-step, -step, very informative. What I will tell you though is a big pointer. Um, I'm gonna roll this carpet out and I'm gonna put all the parts on the piece of carpet the way they're gonna face in the boat, and then I'm gonna cut everything directionally the exact same way. 
Big mistake people make is they don't pay attention to the parts and they cut random shapes every which direction out of their carpet and assume because the carpet's the same color that when they put it in their boat, it's just going to be the same color. Problem is, guys, this carpet has grains and the light reflects off those grains and forms a different shade of gray depending on which way the carpet is facing. And that's how boats look like... Uh, Looked like somebody that didn't know what they were doing did the carpet job and that's where you get 50 shades of gray interior because all the parts are cut from a different side of the carpet and facing a different direction. I don't know if that makes any sense. If you want to find out more about it, check out the video I left the link to, but I'm going to get to wrapping. my scotch bright sanded everything inside really quickly cleaned it with naphtha paper towels and i'm going to take this and black it out i'm going to quickly take some gorilla construction adhesive and run a bead down this seam just to kind of give it some extra protection in case water gets in there it won't leak directly through and uh, let that cure up but it's going to all get covered with plywood just an extra precaution, just to try to keep it dry. Time to get the bottom done inside the hatches. And what I'm gonna do is something a little different on this one. I'm gonna use some foam, but I'm gonna use this one inch. And dude, this stuff is super thick. You can walk on it and um, it, doesn't, it doesn't have any give. So I'm gonna use this, but instead of just setting it directly on the bottom of that boat, I'm gonna use a few strips of this thinner closed cell insulation foam to strip it out and um and then put this down on top of those strips so there will be a little bit of an air void under there in case water gets in and give it the ability to drain but uh that's how i'm going to do it and uh this is just some scrap i had left over and this is one inch um i believe this is quarter inch i almost forgot before i do the foam i actually need to put this divider that i made in place and this is just going to go in between and it's going to attach to that framing that i put in the middle early on the framing stage. I'm just using stainless steel self tappers that I got on Amazon. You get the whole pack of a hundred of these for like 10 bucks and uh, my impact. And as you can see, I'm just tapping those through, hitting that angled aluminum. All right, just getting a measurement inside the hatch, cutting off my strips of the Artec foam, stripping it, Gorilla construction adhesive. I'm gonna put some a little bit on the bottom, couple little spots to tack it. And I'll just glue this in. I'm going to hold off this channel so water can go and drain through. And I'm going to put a strip here. And I'm going to put a strip back over here. And that'll space it off the, off the uh, bottom for the next layer of foam. So it'll have air underneath to, to ventilate and breathe. Got my piece cut, but obviously it's not gonna fit through this hatch, but this is the size I need. So I'm gonna two piece it. I'm gonna cut it right down the middle. Then I'm gonna slide a piece into the left, glue it down, slide a piece into the right, glue it down. And then what I'll have to do is actually carpet over this inside the hatch. All right, got everything in. Nice and tight fit. Time to do the other side. All right, got my carpet piece pre-cut to the size that I need inside the uh, hatch. Got my glue, just gonna spray glue all over the foam in there and then set my piece in there carefully and uh, glue it down. And then that's all she wrote. Um, this will just be glued into place, no way to staple it or secure it, but this glue does hold when it cures. Went ahead and taped off the perimeter around the hatches, blacked everything out. Same paint I used on the inside. Well, quick job, makes it look a little nicer. Um, obviously the panels will cover to here and here so just going to give it a little black reveal um, where I made those cuts and uh, I think I'm about ready to start mounting all the carpet pieces. I'm going to go ahead and mount the hatches and so what I've got here is a six foot offset piano hinge. I got these from tinyboatnation.net. Leave the link down in the description. I'm going to cut them on my saw 
I'm going to cut it to just a couple inches. Um, use two of these on each hatch. Let me show you what I did here. All right, so I'm gonna do a time lapse while I install the other side. But essentially, I just put this panel in place, shove this under it, mark where the hinges go, dr drill my holes, ran my countersink, and then install my rivets. I'll show you on this side with a time lapse. Thank <laughs> you.